The Republican Party would be really smart to start trying to absorb as much of the Tea Party movement as possible. Uh, because this is the future of our country. The Tea Party movement is the future of politics. The Tea Party movement is, is a revelatory moment for us. It mm -hmm. really puts in stark uh, relief uh, where the American people are, how they feel, and what they feel. Uh, and I think it's important for our party to appreciate and understand this so that we can move towards it, embrace it, and but then move not. into the future. That's the chairman of the Republican National Committee, and before him, the Fox News commentator, they now say is the de facto leader of the Tea Party movement, arguing that the Republican Party's path back to power is that movement. That's the rhetoric. Well, today, rhetoric became reality in the state of South Carolina, where the state Republican Party and a coalition of state Tea Party groups agreed to work together moving forward. The merging has started. And the effort by the Republican Party to adopt and absorb what sells itself as a grassroots conservative movement this time around uh, is way different from what went on the last time there was an energizing grassroots movement from the right. Then it was the Ron Paul revolution. Ron Paul's supporters held rallies, spray painted street graffiti, raised astounding sums of money with one day online money bombs, all without the help of a party machine, big money beltway lobbyists, or even much prodding from Dr. Paul himself. Despite that honest to goodness grassroots enthusiasm, look how Ron Paul was treated by the Republican establishment. He was excluded from a presidential candidates forum that was sponsored by Fox News. Dr. Paul elected to hold his own competing event at the same time. Ron Paul was refused a speaking slot at the 2008 Republican National Convention. So he held his own convention across town, which drew more than 10,000 supporters. In contrast, Fox News Today endlessly promotes the Tea Partiers, going so far as to have their network personalities host Tea Party events. Leading elected Republicans today, of course, fall all over themselves to speak at Tea Party events. Tea Partiers claim the small government, low taxes mantle of libertarianism that has been the hallmark of the Ron Paul revolution, but the Tea Partiers, at least some of them, seem to be opposed to him, too. As we reported last night, Dr. Paul is facing three challengers in his congressional district in Texas, all of whom are in some way aligned with the Tea Party movement. Joining us now is Republican Congressman Dr. Ron Paul. Dr. Paul, it's really nice to have you back on the show. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rachel. You are being challenged in your re-election primary by several uh, Tea Partiers. What, what is your relationship with the Tea Party movement now? Well, it's about the same. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, the Tea Party represents uh, those views that I expressed during the campaign. Uh, the, the Tea Party type movement, the people who are unhappy with the government, where I go, generally are on the campuses, and we still get large crowds out. But, but my message is somewhat different. I think the message uh, gets a little bit diluted when a lot of people come in, and the Republican Party wants to make sure that maybe there's a neocon type of influence. But, but no, what we're doing with the campaign for liberty is alive and well, and the young people are responding. But I talk a lot about a different foreign policy. I talk about civil liberties. And I talk about where we ought to cut the budget, and and uh, this is what they want to hear. I talk about the war on drugs. Uh, this is not what is generally heard from the Republican Party, and sometimes the Tea Party accepts these ideas, and sometimes they don't. But uh, I think uh, I think if the one thing that brings people together is they know there's something wrong in Washington, but you have progressive Democrats that know there's something wrong in Washington. They'd like a better foreign policy too, and uh, they're they're not exactly totally satisfied. So, but the people are coming together because they're unhappy. They know that debt is outrageous. It's out of control. Countries are going bankrupt. California's bankrupt. Our country really is bankrupt. And that's what they're unhappy about. And it's out of control government. And uh, I think I have been much more precise in what we should do and change in foreign policy, caring about civil liberties, and be truly a fiscal conservative. And believe it or not, uh, I do have a us quite a few Democrats who are willing to agree with these basic principles in general, even the balanced budget issue. I mean, there are Democrats that actually have joined with me in saying, you're right, uh, we may want to balance the budget in a different manner, but they do agree that there's something seriously wrong when you're spending a couple of trillion dollars a year you don't even have. That is nothing but danger for us in this country. Con Congressman, I don't, I don't want to cause any family rifts in the, in the Paul household, but I know your son Rand Paul is running for Senate, and he, he in fact made his campaign announcement on this show, which was uh, great for us. We 
we were honored by that. Um, now Sarah Palin has sort of emerged as the unofficial leader of the Tea Party movement. She has endorsed your son's run for Senate. Is there anything about her platform, either now or as a vice presidential candidate, that gives you pause about that endorsement? Oh, I guess I could say that about most Republicans, so there probably wouldn't be any different. Uh, so, yes, there, there is. But I, uh, you know, I am in the Republican Party, and I've worked with, uh, uh, you know, with Republicans, and I, but I work with the Democrats, too. So, but I try to find issues that cross party lines. You take transparency of the Fed or personal privacy or maybe ending the war or, or talking about uh, the war on drugs. So on these issues, I can get support from both parties. So. Sure, there's a, a lot of things that uh, the average Republican, uh, I might, you know, disagree with them, but they'll disagree with me uh, as well. But I think the what was really happening in the presidential campaign was their surprise to find out, as a matter of fact, to my surprise, too, that there were a lot of people out there that really cared about it and considered themselves even conservatives, not only libertarians, but conservatives, constitutionalists, that wanted somebody to talk about these issues. And I think it will continue. But to say that, oh, yeah, that's what the whole Tea Party movement's all about, and that's all they're going to talk about, I think I'd be naive to believe that's going to happen because everybody likes to join what looks like a, uh, a popular movement, and they, then they want to come in and influence that movement. But I think that happens to the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. For instance, I think, I think the neocon neo issues on foreign policy is, is not exactly dead these days. <laughs> you know, there's an influence uh, in progressive Democrats aren't all that happy with the foreign policy where the war keeps being expanding and more troops in Afghanistan, bombing Yemen and bombing Pakistan and thinking about going into Iran. So that's the infiltration philosophically of uh, different positions. And I deal more in that arena, hoping that the ideas of sound money and transparency of the Fed and a better foreign policy will actually affect both parties, because I know there's a lot of Americans who agree with this issue. You, and I know the young people are very open to these ideas. Republican Congressman Ron Paul, uh, who for a long time now has represented a movement that I think really does cross uh, some partisan lines and upset things uh, in, a, in a small C conservative way. Thank you very much for your time, sir. We're really glad that uh, you've been able to be with us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Rachel.